Greetings and welcome back. So, in between videos, I have taken the liberty to set up the remaining static meshes that we're going to be using in this level. Now, currently, you see all the meshes we've set up so far. There's the door, uh, here are the shelves, and then, of course, there are the supports along the ceiling. Now, if I come over here and go to View, Browser Windows, and open up the Group Editor again, you'll see that we have those groups that we set up in the last video. And I'm going to slide the Group Editor kind of off the view so that all we see is just this list of, uh, of various groups. And what I want to do is walk you through the groups that were added kind of during the interim so you can see the meshes that were used, get an idea of how they were placed, and then if you'd like to build something similar, you should be armed with everything you really need. So starting here on this kind of diagonal wall, we built some tanks. It may look complicated at first, but really all it is is a single tank static mesh repeated three times. And then we've got some pipe static meshes here, which you can see there's a T-junction, and then a straight piece, and then another T-junction, and then a little elbow at the very end, so very simple. And then we've got these little clamp-like pieces that just kind of pull one out so you can see it, that are placed to look like they're holding the tanks onto the wall. Very straightforward, it really only takes just a couple of moments to set up. And really, that's going to be true of everything you see here. But when you combine it all together, the level starts to feel a bit more rich. Like It has a, a lot more detail, a lot more things going on. So there's our wall tank system. Now, over here on the other side of the room, on this opposite diagonal wall, we set up what I call the hose wall. And this looks really complex at first. If you're not used to placing meshes, this might be kind of scary. But let me just kind of pick it apart real quick. So we've got these meshes here. And the, you can see these are just some straight pipes that have been rotated at 45 degrees. If I slide these out of the way, this still looks really complicated until you catch on that the bulk of these hoses, like right here, that's just one static mesh. And if you want to see which one it is, if you just happen to be curious on this one mesh, you can click Find in Content Browser. And this is SNEC Wires SM Thin Wire 12. There's a whole bunch of these. And they've just kind of been piled together. There's some straight ones in the background and then some curly ones up front. And they've been strategically placed so that when these pipes are put up against the wall, as I kind of undo all the way back, some of these kind of random ones sort of you know weave in and out of the pipes. Didn't take very long to set up. Now, continuing on, let me go back to the group editor. So, over here in this little area, we added a vehicle rack. So, I mean, it looks just like a little walkway. In fact, it is just a little walkway. With some rails around it, little hydraulic supports at the corners, and this really cool kind of a um, mechanical arm, almost like a robot arm system helping to hold up one end. So, you can maybe imagine that sliding along or lifting the... Uh, the rack up and down, and then we can place a vehicle on this later if we so desire. Now, moving back over here to this side of the room, we added what I call the air compressor. That's just kind of what it's supposed to represent. We have this one mesh over here, so it's just a couple of tanks with some kind of cool control box in between them, and then really it's this same tank that we had over here on the wall, just a bit larger, stacked on their end with a rack underneath. So, there we go there. Now, Continuing to move along, we have the front room hazardous fuel area. Again, that same tank, and again, the same pipes. It's just now we've added a valve, and we've lined up the pipes so that they surround the tank in kind of an interesting way. And then around the whole contraption, we've put a chain link fence just to make the whole thing look a bit more dangerous. And over here on the side, we've got these pipe static meshes that have these cool kind of alarms built onto the top in case the pressure gets too high. Which brings us over here to this area, and I'm going to move my light. Things are getting a little dim here, so let me take this light. We'll just slide it over here. It's just our work light anyway. And this is where we built the hydro station, or at least that's what I'm calling it. Now, this may be one of the more complex contraptions that we put together. We have this little kind of hydro tank static mesh. Now, if you want to see which one this is, I'm, I know I'm not showing you every single thing, but uh, there's really not too many meshes to dig through, so let's find this in the content browser. And this is the LT Mech SM Tech Cylinder 01. What a great name. And if I hold down the L key, we can kind of rotate around that. You can see what it looks like. Now, surrounding this, we've got exactly the same pieces we used up here 
along our supports, just repeated. And then we've got the same pieces that we used over here on the wall tanks to hold them up, just kind of aimed back in the other direction. So that creates kind of a cool little clamp mechanism on top, and that's being held in place by these really cool spring static meshes and a little rack that kind of mounts those onto the wall. Now underneath, we've got a little base and a couple of fence-like meshes to make it look like it's supposed to be walled off so you can't you know, accidentally drive a car into it or anything like that. Now we've got the ultimate fire hydrant here. It's just a static mesh that looks like several different fire hydrants all bolted onto each other. And then this little static mesh has got some lights and a little dripping hose on it. All right, so let's move back over to the group editor. So let's go to view, open up the group editor. Now, let me slide this back out of the way. I put a wall around this, just a little tiny retaining wall. I thought it made sense since this might be the kind of thing that could leak everywhere. Now, this wouldn't exactly contain the leak, but it would keep it from spilling out too far too quickly. So it's just a little tiny division wall. And that's just about everything in this room. I think there's just a couple of other things. There were some stacked crates over here, just kind of make everything look a little more cluttered. And really, I think that's about it. Now, the only, the last thing that we added were some uh, light sources, some static meshes that looked like lights. So if I come over here to front room light meshes and turn that on, you see that all around the room we've placed, like here's one little light static mesh, and then we place these guys along the ceiling. And then here on top of the I-beam are these kind of fluorescent tube static meshes. So there's lights kind of all over the place, but right now they're just static meshes. They're not really emitting any light, and we'll talk about how to deal with that a little bit later. The only other thing up here in the front room is some debris, and these are just some debris static meshes that are kind of scattered on the floor. There's some busted rocks over here, and there's this kind of scattered static mesh. It looks almost like concrete was poured on the floor or something. Okay, so let's move on and take a look at the back room. Now the back room was kept fairly simple, a little cleaner. We started off with some generators along one wall. So it's just same static mesh, copied twice over. And then on top of that, we put some walkways. So we've got a little pair of stairs, walks around, got a nice railing system so we can walk around up there. Now across the other way, we've got some storage tanks. This is that same tank static mesh that you keep seeing over and over again. And the same rack that was actually used in here on the floor. Just repeated and scaled up. So I have these huge storage tanks. And then we have the back room hydro station, which is that same hydro tank. And you recognize these meshes. Just repeat it over again. Just give them a, a new purpose back here. And we've got this little tiny guy here just to help us out. Now... Let's see, continue along, we've got the backroom light meshes. So these are all the light meshes, so more of these guys. And then we have these blue meshes up here up top, and those are on both sides of the room. There's also some lights back here behind the generators, just to make things look a little bit more complete. Now, if we creep our way all the way back around, the only other thing I added to this level, and it was just to kind of make it, I don't know, look a little more cluttered, like a little more was going on, I added some hanging cables. Now, if you take a look, these look a lot more complicated than they really are. You'll see it's just this one static mesh has three separate hoses, and then that was duplicated off a few times, and this is all one static mesh. So you just duplicate this a few times, and you end up with a nice kind of hangy, complex cable look. And that's it. That's all the static meshes that we added. So I would love to actually walk around this level, but currently the lighting needs to be rebuilt, so we would just get a black level. So what I'm going to do instead is go ahead and save at this point, and then from here we're going to move forward and take a look at lighting up our level.